Greetings and welcome, internet friends and geometricians of the world and the future. Yeah, and the the nash nash. Yeah. So, uh, the nation of geometry. Mm. So, uh, so here we go. We were yesterday classifying polyhedron, three-dimensional solids. Uh, we were slicing them up. Looking at cross sections, we were drawing them a little bit. Let's see how I can uh, doodly doodly. Uh, so, the first thing uh, it said here was match the polyhedron with its name. Now, there were a uh, couple main categories we broke polyhedron into, which were prisms, which are kind of box shaped, in which there are two planes that are two faces that are parallel to one another. So, notice these two pentagons are these faces that are parallel to each other. We call those faces bases in the world of a prism. And since it's got two bases that are parallel, we would consider it a prism. And since there are two of them and they are pentagonal, uh, we would call this a pentagonal, pentagonal prism, if you will. Pentagonal, though, sounds pretty cool. Now, uh, question five, I like this one a lot, because it may feel as though the base should be on the bottom, but not always. This is like some sort of statue of a dictator that's been toppled over. Uh, uh, this has to have this triangular base here and the other triangular base there. One of the things about uh, pyramids, or prisms, is that all of their lateral surfaces will be rectangles, all right? So all of these faces are little rectangle guys, rectangle boys, right? Um, and uh, I can't have a lateral face that is made up of a non-rectangular shape, uh, or at least parallelogramular. Wow, that was a crazy word. Um, so this one, its rectangular faces were all on kind of the sides and the bottom. Uh, so this was a toppled over, a tipped over prism. And this one by name, would it would have been uh, based on the shape of those bases. Those were triangles. This is a triangular prism. I'll, I'll open it. I, all right, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. Triangular prism. No, I was, I was just, uh, sorry, I was a bit busy. Yeah, so also you should have, yeah. Uh, so here we go. Next, uh, next problema. Take a moment, think about these while I write a pass. No internet, friends. I won't let you sign out of the room. Ah. Let's see. Wow, guys, internet, friends, this is live. 10.41 a.m. at 1.8.19. Uh, this I mean, they, they could kind of look it up. I think it says Buhus somewhere. The B-U-H-S, you know. Here we are, and the sunset. So, okay, uh, so it says, tell whether the polyhedron, uh, the solid is a polyhedron. And so a polyhedron is made up of polygonal faces, all right? Things that have edges, things like that. Uh, so this one, yes, is a polyhedron. Well, this one is not. Uh, it's a mailbox. Uh, one of the reasons is that this shape right here, this quote-unquote face, uh, has a curve on it. So there's one problem. And another problem is that this surface here is all curvy, uh, and so that doesn't work. So things like cones and cylinders, uh, spheres, uh, are not polyhedron. Now, the fact that this one is a polyhedron... Uh, I believe, is this a prism or a pyramid? What are your thoughts? Oh, I see some traps right there. So I see a, a trapezoidal base, and that trap is going to need to be one of my bases. So this also is a, a toppled over uh, prism. I see two of those traps. Uh, so this looks like it's a trapezoidal. Zoidberg. Uh, prism. Right there. Yeah. So you name the prism, or the pyramid for that matter, based on the shape of its base. And I made an all about that base reference. 
the other time. Shameful. Okay, uh, so here we go. Uh, this is when we go Fruit Ninja. So imagine you've got a solid, and then you slice that up. Right, it's awesome. <coughs> and, and so if I slice this up, the question is, will the inside core of an apple look like a star? Wow. Uh, it, the question is, what does this little surface look like, this face that is left over once I slice it? And this one, this one looks like it's a triangle, uh, which is pretty neat because a cone has no base to it, right? It's circular, which is not a polygon. The lateral surface is this weird curvy thing. Uh, but yet there's a way I can slice it that will give me a regular old, probably isosceles, triangle. Uh, probably, I don't have it in front of me. Ah, here's this concept, uh, which the idea of rotating a two-dimensional figure around an axis to generate a solid, by the way, is a calculus concept that is used to calculate the volume of a three-dimensional solid uh, in the world of calculus. Foreshadowing. Uh, imagine I have this crazy curve. Whoop, 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 whoop. And I wanted to rotate that around the x-axis. Why am I all writing like that? There we go. If I wanted to rotate this around the x-axis, uh, I could. And it would be, I didn't do it right. But I would end up having like this weird surface, like, like putting an, a, a piece of wood on a lathe, you know, sort of thing. Uh, that you actually could calculate the volume of this rotated object in three dimensions. Uh, weirdly enough. We're not doing anything that crazy. They just asked us to uh, draw it and try to identify it. Um, so if I'm ref rotating, not reflecting, over this axis, imagine that this point is being rotated out towards us and then would land over here, right? And then would, would loop back around. So I'm trying to draw it like a tilted perspective. Uh, and then if I do that here as well, right, this would be rotated out towards us and around. And if I draw what figure remains, it looks like cyl cylinder there, right there, right there. So this is a cylinder. All right, so if you can imagine that sweeping through that plane, right? Or if I spun it so fast, like what would it kind of look like as my eyes blur all of those images together? Cylinder ER, I believe. Uh, I'm not a spellitician either way. Um, all right, here's here's one, a sketch. So a prism, so it's going to have two parallel bases, and those bases are going to be pentagonal. So let me show you uh, uh, Penta 5. Not unlike Pentachu, the Pikachu-style poke Pokegon that I had come up with. Uh, anyways, don't worry about it. It was just a million-dollar idea that never happened. My dreams are crushed. Um, so the way I draw a prism is start by drawing the base and not just like a plain old pentagon, but imagine if I pushed it and it fell, fell down, toppled. Uh, so, so let's draw a, a kind of smushed looking, uh, pentagon like so. Okay. So I'm imagining that it's, it's been pushed and, and fell right back sort of thing and then i'm going to draw because there it's a prism there's going to be two of these i'll draw another one uh somewhat translated right underneath it or above it whichever way uh this point is you know going to be right there and and i'm going to imagine that these two edges will actually be inside the object it's not going to be pretty but that's okay uh and then i'm just going to connect the dots fa la 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 so i'm adding Right, connections between all of these. And this back one, I'm going to make dashed to make it look like it's behind the object. If you don't do the dashed lines, that's fine too. But this is just kind of like a, hey, look at that. Mr. Waddy's teaching art. Straight up Bob Ross in here. Wow. Hmm. As far as our inter internet friends know, I have come in dressed up as Bob Ross today. Like, they don't know the difference. I, they don't see my face. 
Mm. I mean, I mean, I could, but yeah, rare face reveal YouTube channel. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then here's an interesting little logic question. Is it possible for me to Fruit Ninja slice a cube and end up with an isosceles triangle? Let me try to draw a cube. Uh, so when I draw a cube, right, maybe you guys have been drawing cubes since the middlest of schools. All right. And so I think it'd be possible for me to slice like this front corner off of that cube in such a way that I would have an isosceles triangle. Like, can you guys imagine kind of slicing that corner? Yeah, I could probably slice it where it's equilateral as well. Um, but yeah, if I just kind of move this point a little bit further down than these two are away, I, I believe I would end up having an isosceles triangle cross section there. All right. Okay, well, I think that's all there is for today, folks. So the answer to that question is yes. And uh, have a great day. Uh, Wadios, Wadios.